many of you know, I was a part of a lot here at St. Joe's over my four years, so I tried to keep this as short as possible, but just bear with me. Um, I stand before all of you proudly, but uncomfortably, knowing that this will be my last time addressing my fellow students as a student and as your SAC president. It's a bittersweet feeling, and it upsets me to know that this part of my life is coming to an end. However, I'm excited to see what the next journey of my life will hold. It may not be as exciting or consist of such amazing, life-changing people, but I know it will be the, the filling to the mold that St. Joseph's College created. I never expected to be at the place I am right now, speaking in front of all of you. However, I also never expected my last competitive game in the Hill Center to be a volleyball match. So I guess that goes to show that most plans don't work out as you initially have them. I would like to thank everyone who has had a dealing in my success here at St. Joe's. From my teammates to my coaches to my fellow student athletes and the staff here in the Hill Center. Sean, you're my brother, man. That's really all that has to be said. You've been by my side since you came to the school, and we've been able to accomplish some incredible things. James, Mache, Puge, Oscar, Iris, Hope, and new to the party, Kayla. I mean, there's not much to say other than thank you for being the prime example a college kid like me needed. Even though Mache, at one point, you told security to make sure I didn't come into the Hill Center on my senior night, which was pretty horrible because I felt lost because there was it wasn't a day when I wasn't in here. To my teammates, like I told you all last night before the awards dinner, out of all the awards I've been blessed to receive at this school, the greatest honors, the greatest honor I've had was the privilege of receiving the captain title of such a great group of guys and having you guys put your trust in me. Coach Coco, I mean, you're the reason I'm here. Four years ago, you took me on a tour around this campus when the Hill Center wasn't even built, and I fell in love. The rest was history. Once I met Mike Megafu and Rudy on the tour and spoke with them, you didn't have to say another word. I love you, Coach, and I mean that with every ounce of my heart. You're one of the hardest working men I've had the pleasure of meeting, but in talking to you, you would never know how much was going on in your life. Because the thing you were currently working on was your priority, and I respect the hell out of that. Because when you were with us on the court, I knew that we were your priority, and you would go to hell and back for us. The example you set of your hard work was reflected in the scouting approach you put together. And as a joke, I literally saved every single one of them and was going to give them to you today to show you how much I appreciate the effort. However, due to the situation in my house, I lost most of them. There were a lot of them, so they probably were the thing that started the fire, but I digress. Again, no, seriously, thank you, Coach. All right, you mean the world to me. So along my journey of being a Division Three athlete, I learned that our greatest strength isn't necessarily in our athletic abilities, but in the power of our words. Muhammad Katani, a famous public speaker, believed words, when articulated and said in the right way, can change someone's mind. They can alter someone's belief. You have the power to bring someone from the slums of life and make a successful person out of them. A simple choice of words can make the difference between someone accepting or denying your message. More importantly, if you are a role model, or a person who's admired, anything you say could be believed. Anything you utter could be taken as truth. Words have power, words are power, and words could be your power. You can change a life, inspire a nation, or in this instance, a school, and make this world a beautiful place. Just remember, your mouth could spit venom or it could mend a broken soul. The power student athletes have lies in the power of their words, our power to communicate and change lives. We we'll often look back at our time at St. Joseph's College, reminiscing of all the fond memories. However, college, more specifically St. Joseph's College, is not something that lies behind us once we graduate, but rather is something that becomes the foundation for what lies in front of us. I came to this college as a boy, a boy who didn't know what to expect, a boy who wasn't filled with fear and nervousness, but one who was anxious, anxious to see what this place had in store for me. I mean, little did I know that the following four years would be filled with people, events, and circumstances that I could never imagine. My time at St. Joe's lasted four years, which is a typical amount of time spent at a school for a graduating senior. However, my four years weren't typical. I had the same four years as many as you will have. But I made a point to say I won't go through the motions with this, and I will take advantage of every opportunity that presented itself. I've been a member of the basketball team, the volleyball team, the cross-country team, 
and the Chapel of Players th Theater Group. I've hosted events that saw 400 people, events that raised over $7,000. I've been to the Women's Homeless Shelter in Park Slope to deliver lunches while being a part of clinics for those with special needs and those who are underprivileged. All of which have made it easy for me to say that I've had the best experience of my life in these four years at St. Joseph's because of the opportunity that it has given to me. So if you're, saying, if you're sitting here and saying you haven't had a great time at St. Joe's or this place isn't all that great, then I honestly say that you aren't doing enough to take advantage of every opportunity that's being offered. We label ourselves as student athletes while forgetting what being a student athlete's all about. It isn't the student part, it isn't the athlete part, it's that hyphen that you see in between both those words. The hyphen is the most important part of being a student athlete. It's what you do in between your studies, what you do in between your athletics that makes you a student athlete and what makes this school so great. So if you're showing up for class and practice, then leaving and saying this hasn't been the best experience of your life, then I urge you to go somewhere else where they don't acknowledge that hyphen, because that hyphen is what's going to change an all right experience into a great experience. That event you go to in between class, practice, is where the memories lie. That homeless shelter you volunteer at is where the feeling of gratification and self-value comes from. I don't care if you're a 4.0 student or a 2.5 student, the scale in which you'll be measured isn't found in your GPA or the wins and losses on the court or field, but rather within your heart knowing that you did something today that made you a better person and made someone else's life a little better. Something that made you see St. Joe's in its entirety for what it is, the best school there is. I wanted to invest so much into the school, not only because I was paying tens of thousands of dollars for it, but because I grew to love this school no matter who you are, and no matter who you are or where you're from, if you love something, and you'll do anything in your power to make sure that that thing you love knows you're there whenever you need it or whenever it needs you. So I volunteered my time. I made time. Time that wasn't always there to show that I was here for the school. And I'm not saying that just to talk myself up, but just to acknowledge how much I really appreciate this school. My father learned from his father and passed on to me some advice. And that advice was that the greatest gift you can offer this world is your time. And you bet that if you're offering someone your time, then you better give your maximum effort because otherwise you're wasting both of yours. So volunteer, volunteerism was huge for me growing up. That's what I was raised to know. It was all I knew. But it wasn't until I got to St. Joseph's College that I finally realized the severity and importance of what my father had preached to me his entire life. To be a leader, not a follower. To volunteer your time knowing that if you do so, then your time will have been well spent. I've experienced a lot during my tenure here at St. Joe's. I've witnessed much change in not only the school, but also in myself. I've seen what it was like to play basketball in the basement of Tui Hall. I've seen the expressions of joy on people's faces when the doors were finally made open to the Hill Center. The same joy that was expressed on the faces of fans when that buzzer went off of our first game and we had won. I've seen coaches and faculty come and go. I've been to the NCAA conventions, to Skyline Conference-wide meetings, and I've first-handedly seen the transformation of this school and the athletic program. I've experienced a thrill of the Skyline playoffs and a Skyline championship, only to take them for granted and watch them passing by the following two years. Year to year, everything would change. New teammates, clean record, different circumstances. But despite all the change, the one thing that was always constant in my life and in my heart was the fact that I always had St. Joseph's College. On January 1st, 2018, as many of you may know, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. And by January 24th, thanks to all your love and support, I had beaten it and was back to playing the game I love in front of the people I love here at St. Joe's. Fast forward two months later, and I'm literally standing in front of my house, watching it go up in flames, watching the same tears that rolled down my mother's face that came down her face when I was originally diagnosed. Only and only to be interrupted by something fly out the window. Something that a fireman threw out the window. Something that gave my family and I a much needed break from all the chaos. Of all the things to be thrown out that window, I can't imagine one that was better to make us all smile. It was a pink tutu. A tutu that I had worn during the breast cancer walk earlier this year. A tutu that was associated with St. Joseph's College. A tutu that gave me and my family a chance to smile. A chance to get away. And that has been what St. Joseph's College has been for me. A place of refuge. St. Joseph's College has saved my life in more ways than one. It has been a home to me when I didn't even have one. It has been a safe haven for me in my darkest hours, but more importantly, it has been the foundation for the life I plan to build. 
They say it takes a village to raise a boy, and that's true. However, it took St. Joseph's College to turn that boy into a man. To show him the light when everything seemed so dark. To raise him up when it was expected he'd stay down. But most importantly, to allow him to be something and not to seem like he was something. The one constant about St. Joseph's College throughout all the change is, in fact, the change. St. Joseph's College changes people. It changes them for the better. I'm here to say that I've changed for the better as a result of St. Joseph's College. And I mean it when I say it has been the best decision I've ever made in my life. So I leave you all with some things to remember. Take advantage of every, every opportunity being a student athlete has to offer. All right? Know the power in your words and know that it's great to work on your weaknesses, but really embrace your strengths because that's what makes you you. Remember that happiness, remember that happiness is a choice it is not predicated off the past or off of circumstance, but predicated off your desire to want to be happy. So wake up every day and decide to be happy. Put your trust in people. Be vulnerable. Because it is in those instances where you learn the most about yourself. Live your life working toward a goal, because that goal will keep you from thinking about life as a day after day sort of thing, and will make those days feel like stepping, to stepping stones towards something greater. Lastly, just keep going. Let that be your mantra. Don't stop. Keep going. Don't settle for anything less than the absolute best. Don't limit yourself. All right? Win now. All right? Win now. Don't take games for granted. Don't take playoff opportunities for granted. Win now. All right? I see something in each and every one of you here as I stand before you, and I challenge you all to go out into this world and find it. All right? In the words of our great school, S.A. Nun Videre, which means to be, not to seem. All right? Be something. Go out there, achieve it, go after it with all your heart. All right? Go Bears. Thank you, everyone, and I love you guys so much. <laughs>